Hi there. So this little uh, document I've pulled together is really useful if you are doing some digital marketing initiatives and you're not exactly sure what you should be tracking. So what I've done is pulled together some key ones, so six key activities that you're likely to be un undertaking. So what I've got here is Google Ads, social ads. So in particular, you know, if you're advertising on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc., organic social. So that's when you're just posting at no cost to you, apart from obviously the time to create your content. And you're posting that to your social profiles. And then you've got email campaigns, which is something that you would send out to your database, to your list of people that have opted in, subscribe to your communication. And then you've got things like SEO. So that's an ongoing strategy that helps to build uh, your website ranking on the search engines. And then if you do have have an app, then you could potentially be driving um, ads within the apps through to your specific app that you want people to download. So there are just six uh, out of many options, I guess, but probably some more key things that you're likely to be doing in the digital space to drive traffic and well awareness traffic and ultimately sales of your product. Now, that's the activity, the other tactics you would undertake. And then this here is showing where do we send them and we're likely to be sending them to our website. That's probably nine out of 10 times. Although if you do have an app store, then you'd, um, sorry, an app, you'd be taking them to the app store for a, a hopefully uh, for a download. So the other ones we're going to focus on within this document. So here we have is what to measure for each activity. And I've got here your Google ads, uh, meta ads, or you could even consider these for, you, you know, if you're on TikTok or LinkedIn as well, um, SEO, uh, social media, but organic posts are so not paid, and then email and then app store. So if we go back over here and look at Google ads, what we're looking at in, is impressions, clicks, cost per click, conversion, and uh, another conversion percentage and cost per con per acquisition or cost per conversion. So they're the critical ones that you'd want to be aware of when you're looking at Google Ads. So impressions is really how many times your ad's been served, if you like. Clicks is the number of times the audience that have seen the impression have actually clicked on it how much that cost um, of, sorry, the cost that the click is, so cost per click. Conversion, so conversion would be an install for a um, app or a conversion for a website visit might be you want them to subscribe or, or download a ebook or some sort of free tool that you're giving them. Or if you're an e-com store, it could actually be a, um, a sale so they're actually making a purchase and then you also want to then look at a CPA cost per acquisition cost per sale those are essentially interchangeable and then if we look at uh, if we this is focused on meta ads but you could definitely apply this to other social platforms so again impressions so how many ads are actually being served the clicks so people number of people have clicked on the ad again a cost per click conversion install and the conversion percentage and then you've got your cost per acquisition so when it's you can see here there's some common ground and so that does make it a little bit um, easier for you in terms of if you're learning this to understand uh, what you need to know and then how it can apply across those different um, advertising channels now with SEO search engine optimization this is uh, consists of both on and off optimization, off-site optimization, so on-site and off-site optimization. And an off-site example might be something like having backlinks to your website, whereas on-site uh, optimization will be things like descriptions, meta tags, um, keywords, all those sorts of things. So that's what drives the success of your SEO. And how you would measure it is organic traffic. So in your Google Analytics or what, what will be GA4, you'll be able to see what traffic is being generated from organic organic search. Then you've got a click through rate. So this is from those search results, how when you show up in a, a Google search result, as an example, how many people are actually clicking on that and coming to your web page? 
Then you've got a bounce rate. So anything over 80 is not great. So if you do want to look at what your um, key landing pages are, and again, you can find this in your Google Analytics or GA4, you can see your highest bounce rate pages and also what kind of traffic they contribute. If they contribute a lot of traffic, but the bounce rate is high, then that's absolutely a sign for you to make it a priority to have a look at. So keyword rankings, um, so what are the keywords that you should be using and, and have you used the right ones on each page for that specific piece of content that you have. Um, definitely a big one is your site and page um, speed. So you obviously in this day and age, you need to have a really lightning fast website. If it's taking too, uh, too long to load, people are going to bounce off and that could be also what's impacting your bounce rate up here. Backlink, so that's that off-site SEO, one of the tactics you can use or techniques where you might want to say for me as a marketing business, I might want to be on a um, Chamber of Commerce website, um, even great, you know, directories, your social platforms also because they have very high domain authority, they're absolutely valuable to have backlinks from those sites back to yours. Um, your domain authority is how you rank in the world. So as a small business, it's hard to do to, to make that really high uh, but still worthwhile having a look at and it does give you a metric to then track over time to make sure that you're not going backwards and if anything you are making some small steps forward conversion so that is you can have different conversion goals pretty much coming back to these points here depends what your objectives are so you could have a conversion set up where it is um, signing up for your email so a subscriber conversion you could have a uh, conversion metric around number of people who download a free ebook or whatever lead magnet you might have on your website um, or it might be an actual sale or it could be people booking in for an appointment um, you know those kind of things so you can set your conversion what a conversion is to your business based on your goals and then also a conversion percentage so just very generically speaking a website will typically um, convert at say two to four percent so that means for every hundred people that visit your website two to 4% will take an action that leads to a conversion and um, that conversion depends how you've defined the conversion. Then with social media organic, what we want to be looking at, again, these always need to relate back to your goals and your goals for even doing each of these should then link back to your overall strategy. But if you do have an organic social media presence, then you would want to um, keep an eye on your followers. And although followers can be vanity metrics as well, the really big one these days is engagement because you can have 100,000 followers, but if you have really poor engagement, then it's you, you're better off having a smaller group of people with a higher level of engagement, there's more chance that they are then going to become a customer of yours. You can also track your web traffic. So how much of your organic content is driving people to your website? And again, you can use Google Analytics GA4 to look at that metric. And then also I feel number one of your big objectives is not only to get them to your website from your social media platform, but also then to subscribe to your database so that you're continually growing your uh, list that you can then email people with. So that could be... Um, you know, whether it's again a direct subscribe if you have a sign up here or if it's a lead magnet, whatever you're using, you could do web webinar registrations and then they at that same time they're opting into your database, then that would be a really key objective for you um, and something to track, measure your success in the organic social media space. And then if we look at email, uh, obviously just keeping an eye on that database size. So we always, 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 did I stress that enough, want to be growing our database. So keep an eye on that. I would set an, a goal, a growth goal, so that you're always working towards that and looking at ways that you can ensure it is a number one focus in your business from a marketing perspective. Okay, then when you start to execute your emails, what is the open rate? Now, this is where your subject lines can have a really big impact on this. So you've got to put the time into coming up with a compelling subject line. So when people are um, looking at their inbox, your email is interesting enough because your subject line has grabbed their attention. When you open that email, then you will have some content in there that will generally um, inspire them to click through to some further content. So it could be you've created a new blog and you want to get people to your website to read that blog. It could be 
a lead magnet, a new template, something you've created. And again, you want to get them through your website to download that and you get their email or they um, share it or there's another action within the PDF download that you want them to do. It might be register for a webinar, um, use this coupon code, whatever it might be. And also, depending on how much uh, variation of content you put within the body of an email. So, for example, when I was doing some work for Discover Queensland and even Travel Partners, actually, we would have lots of different offers. So maybe there's a Gold Coast offer, there's a Mediterranean Mediterranean cruise offer, there's an Alaska cruise offer, there's a Disneyland offer, and you get to see what your database is clicking through on the uh, clicking through to the most within each of those uh, campaigns. And definitely want to keep an eye on your opt-outs. If they are high, that means that your content is not resonating. But also don't um, automatically go to that. Think back to how you recruited or secured that opt-in. Maybe they weren't the right audience for you anyway. So you've got to be clear and confident about the people that are opting in. Are they your target market? Which takes us back to, again, having a really solid marketing strategy so you understand who your audience is. And then you attract the right people into your community and into your database and that will help providing you then understand who they are you'll be better at supplying them with some um, really cool content that's going to be meaningful to them and that will minimize your opt-outs then if we look at an app store so if you do have an app and you're driving traffic to the app store or you're running ads to drive people um, or within the app store you've got um, ads running as well again pretty standard sort of um, digital advertising metrics, how many impressions you've got, which is sort of a, a market share, if you like, in terms of ad share within the ad environment. And that means if you've if you've got quite low, it means either you're not bidding high enough or that there's, um, yeah, there, there might be that there's just a lot of competition bidding for those same words at the moment, which will, again, still come back to a bidding challenge. Uh, how many clicks, so how many people are clicking on your ad and then how many installs you're getting and then a CPI, but in this case CPI means cost per install. Now, um, so there are all the activities and then within um, each of these, obviously you have a call to action and depending um, within the app store, obviously it would be to the app store. Um, whereas if you're doing a Google ad, so with one of my clients, Cruncher receipt app, we do Google ads and we have um, combinations. Some go to the web website, some go direct into the app store. Generally, the ones that go into the app store will perform better. But um, yeah, it's worth testing those things to see. So depending where your ad is directing, so I'll either go call to action will be to the website or click through to the app store. The other, um, the home, the ultimate locations, I guess, where the ad will, or the activity is going to take them. So there's some really good um, metrics for you to be aware of and what you, you should start to track. And you can just set up a spreadsheet to do that if you like, or you might have some uh, more sophisticated tracking tools available. And then I just wanted to quickly cover what you would track there for in your website. So those in the previous screen were activity related based on those specific channels although you tapped into your website analytics and your app analytics to get some of that. These are specific on this page. We've got specific um, metrics for either your website or your app. So for your website, you're looking at sessions. So how many people are coming to your website? Always good to have a look at what's new versus existing. So how, are you always attracting new people into your world? Where are they based? You know, um, depending on if you're a local business, you'd probably look at that from a, a much more granular perspective. Whereas if you're an e-commerce store selling worldwide, then you'd be very interested to know, well, you know, is Australia first, then the UK, then the US, or is US the number one market? And then within the USA itself, is there a, um, you know, is it skewed to California or New York or, um, you know, another state. So you can start to potentially get a little bit more granular around your advertising as well. Uh, traffic source. So that is where it's coming from. So that's the breakdown is what's direct. So when someone types in your URL to your website, uh, whether they've searched for you, so an organic search, whether it's come from your social media or a paid ad or other. So it could be backlinks as well. So you, you want to keep an eye on those. Bounce rate, which I mentioned before. So bounce rate is really important to keep an eye on because if you're putting all this effort into your marketing, whether it's paid and or organic, um, and then the, the web people that are coming of bouncing off, then 
there's something not right there. So we need to look into that and see what it what it is. Uh, goal completions. So that's where that conversion component comes in. So what are the, what are your goal completions or your conversions? So again, if it's e-commerce, it'll be an actual sale or even in e-commerce, you might um, track a conversion for email subscribes or they, you know, in a lot of um, e-com stores, they have the pop-up for your first order to get 10%, 15, 20% off. So I would um, have that set up as a um, goal completion. And then you'd also want to look at the completion rate. So as a percentage, so you can um, put those down as some key metrics for your website. And then within the app store, if you are selling um, an app, then you would want to look at the page views, um, number of installs, number of trials. So that means once they've if you offer a free trial, once they've installed the app, how many people then actually commence their trial? So believe it or not, people do download apps, but then don't take that next step to do the trial. So you want to see how many step into the trial and then upon completion of the trial, actually how many sign up as an ongoing subscriber of your app. You want to have a look at the drop-off rate. So that would be um, from trials to subscribers, but then also subscribe and then how long do you keep them for before they drop off? Um, and then you'll see your average drop off period there as well. So that are some key metrics I wanted to share with you. I think that's really important to, you know, what gets measured gets managed. And I know it's made a huge difference for my business and for the various clients that I've worked for over the years. So, you know, make sure that you're putting that effort in to understand not only your broader strategy and then working through what tactics you believe are right for your business, but when you decide on the those tactics, how the hell are you going to measure them so that you have a benchmark for what you've done to date and then set your goals and then making sure that you're making steps forward and not backwards. And if you are going backwards, making sure that you red light that and you can um, put some time aside to look into why that might be. Now, if you'd love to have a free consult with me, I'd love you to book in. It's 30 minutes um, and it really is me getting to understand what your business is. And if there's any um, key critical challenges that you're having at the moment, just let me know and um, you know I can see if I'm able to help you or even just give you some free tips. I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye for now.